Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and we're at the Clutter Zone. And occupying most of the hobby bench is the box top for the Folk Wolf 200C by Trumpeter, 148 scale. It's a big one. So this is, of course, is part two, and I'm actually starting to work on it here. So let's get this out of the way. Sorry, dog. So, these are the instructions, and no, they're not in the original form, because I lost those. These were thoughtfully provided to me by a member of the London chapter of the International Plastic Model Society, uh, Randy. He scanned them into the computer, and then he emailed them to me, and then I reprinted them. So at least I have instructions. And as you can see, we're starting on the uh, cockpit here. I guess the dog has overcome his frightening of the box landing on him. Yeah, I guess that guess that leg's salty, isn't it? Oh well, I have my hobbies, he has his. So anyway, starting on the cockpit, and I've actually got the sprues over in my main workshop, because they just don't fit on this hobby bench. So these are all the bits and pieces for step one and most of step two. So let's get on it. I want to say a couple words about the instrument panel here. They supply the actual dials as a negative, which is nice, transparency. And then that goes behind the instrument panel itself. Now everywhere where there's a dial, Trumpeter has molded this as a whole, which is really good because that way there's no danger of painting over any of the actual instruments. But it begs the question, why mold this as a clear part at all? Because the parts that are going to be clear, you want to stay clear, they've molded as a whole. So I'm just going to be giving this a coat of semi-gloss black and then hopefully the the surrounds of the dials, I'm just going to give that a little bit of silver paint. But when it's all glued together, it should look really cool. So. They did it the right way, they just didn't have to mold this as a clear part. And it is two days later, and we have the cockpit and the first bulkhead put together and painted. And you can see how that went together. And yeah, it took about two days, not constant working on it, but to get it to this stage. As you can see, the instrument panel came out quite nicely there. Now I want to say something about the color I'm choosing to use for the interior of this. Now, the interior of German planes is usually a very dark gray, and I have chosen to go a little bit lighter than that for the overall floors and bulkheads and things. And for all of the various fittings, I'm going even lighter. And there's a reason for this. They give you this awesome interior for this plane. And quite frankly, other than looking through the canopy here, possibly looking in one of the rear doors and peeking in through some windows, there's not a whole lot of light going in here. You may as well paint all this stuff flat black. So what I'm doing is I'm using as light a color as I can on everything in the hopes that when you do peek in you'll see something. So I'd rather be able to see it and have it a bit lighter than it should be than have it the right color and never be able to see any of this stuff again. So that is the first part of our interior done. This is the floor of the next segment and some of the fittings that are going to go in. So I've been busy off camera. This is the second segment of the interior of our plane. And you can see this very large black object here, which I've decided to call the big ass battery. I'm assuming that's what it is, just judging by the details and things on the top of it. And that's that's huge. Now they give you five of these things and there's another two 
further back on the next segment. And then they give you this. My assumption is, is that these are long range fuel tanks and that maybe this one, this one right here is pretty much a permanent installation. Maybe these other ones are removable and I've checked and actually they do fit through these doors. It's a very tight fit through here. But this certainly looks like they're intended to be removable. I can't think of anything else they could possibly be. If we were talking an airplane from the 50s or the 60s on up, you could say, oh, okay, maybe these are canisters that contain sauna buoys or something like that, or maybe they contain flares. Well, there's no way for whatever is in these things to be dispensed through the lower fuselage. The only thing I can think of is that these are fuel tanks. Which brings up a bit of a question. It's one of these quandaries that I'm kind of annoyed that I thought of in the first place. And this is the only way you can install these ramps that these are on. And at first I was thinking, oh, well these ramps are on here so that when the plane is at rest on the ground, the tanks are going to be level. And that would make sense because if you wanted to make sure they were really, really full, you'd want them to be level except the ramps tilt them back because when the plane is on the ground it puts them at even a greater angle so once again this is one of these why did i even think of this are these parts incorrect should they be the other way so that when the plane is at rest that these structures these tanks are level i don't know at any rate i did did think about it for a while and I figured, you know what, I'm just going to build it. Now, these tanks are a top and lower uh, parts and they did have a very prominent seam and at first I was going to leave it and then I got annoyed and then I filled it and the, the filling is not perfect because I'm still convinced we're really not going to see much of this at all when we get it all together. But at any rate, this is the second segment, and the third segment is coming along. It's almost done. And this is the rearmost segment of our interior. As you can see, there's another two of these, like I said, long-range fuel tanks. I don't know. That's why I've decided they're going to be. At any rate, there's a couple more seats installed in here. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going with lighter grays than I might otherwise, just so that we have some hope of seeing what's inside this plane. And I don't know what color these little, I'm assuming oxygen bottles should be, but I thought a, a zinc chromate would look good. I have no idea what this guy is, but it's been painted duck egg blue. So now, comes the point where we have to attach the three segments together and this is another bit of puzzling construction here in that between our middle segment and our front segment we have this this tab here and it's not going to result in a, a super super strong join but at least it, it it's got a little bit of little bit greater gluing area here between the middle segment and the rear segment however there's no tab or anything it's just simply a butt join now I know you could use this as a little bit of a gluing surface but what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, glue some tabs Oops. I'm going to glue some tabs on the underside here just so that we can attach these together a little bit better. As I just mentioned, I put some reinforcing pieces of plastic in here to connect the middle part of the floor to the, the last segment. So that should hopefully make it fairly strong. All right, I think we have a successful joint. As a matter of fact, from above, it's almost impossible to see where it is. You can just very, very if I get it out of the shadow, you can just very, very slightly see where the seam is. 
and you can see the reinforcing underneath and under this ramp I put some super glue in order to hold it to the floor so that's also tending to reinforce things. Now it's time to get our cockpit section in place. And that is the whole interior assembled and you can see where the join between the cockpit and the rest of it takes place right here. And as I said earlier, I'm not convinced that these should be leaning back. I almost wonder if trumpeter completely screwed up and they should be going the other way. However, I'm going to leave them as they are because I have no proof one way or the other. I am really happy with the way the interior turned out. The only sad thing is, is we may never see any of this again. And what I'll do is I'll just pop this into the fuselage halves so that you can see what I'm talking about here. And it really does fit in here well. So, so far so good. Hey, we can see everything. Yay! And then... There we go. These really do go together quite well. Just some minor misalignments that you can generally fix quite quickly, he said. At any rate. There we go. Now, looking into the cockpit. Oh, this is hard to get all on one shot. Of course, it's because of where the camera is. There we go. So we can see the cockpit nicely. It's peeking in any of these other windows. Even the door. You can uh, kind of see something going on in there. So now the only area, that I'm, the only thing I'm a little disappointed with the fuselage is there doesn't seem to be any sidewall detailing here. Like if we look in here you can see this is just completely bare ass and i'm pretty sure you'd be able to see some of the structure there now because we have the main entrance door here i might add something to that wall but i think in terms of the rest of the interior there's no point in putting any sort of framing or anything in there we're going to be lucky to see any of this stuff so this episode has been a little shorter than my build episodes usually are. I didn't get quite as much done this time as I thought, but since we may never see the interior of this again after the model is put together, I thought I would just post some close-up pictures. So, thanks for watching Dan's Model Works, and until next time, just keep on modeling.